Before Cloverfield, before The Blair Witch, it was hailed as one of the most controversial films of all time. A film that had many audiences believing it was real. Today on this Let's Talk About, we will be discussing one of the most controversial films of all time, 1985's Cannibal Holocaust. Let's go ahead and get a expert in the gore fest, as we like to call it, in the film industry. And trust me, I brought on an expert here, and he is from Texas, so you know he is kicking the fucking shit around. That's my good <laughs> friend, Cammy. <laughs> Cam, you, Cam, how you doing, buddy? I've never been better. I, I just knew we were going to have to be ready to talk about just an all a ballsy movie. <laughs> well, first of all, what do you think of the film itself? Like, as a film... In the in the you know the gore genre, where does Cannibal Holocaust sit for you among all the others? It's basically depending on where you are, it's either an intro level or extreme level. But it's it's an intro into just the basically kind of tap out kind of horror drama. You know? Okay, and it's also known in Japanese as Cannibal Tribe, in Russia as Cannibal Hell. In Bulgaria as cannibalistic doom, in Canada as hell of the cannibals, uh, and just simply as Poland as naked and torn apart, and Finland as burnt offerings of cannibals, in South Korea as just Holocaust. Jesus. Wait, where, where, where was the last one? Where is it just called Holocaust? Just in South Korea. Oh, okay. <laughs> they I didn't was even like, bother. Wow, they just okay. looked out the yeah. cannibal. Yeah, it is Holocaust. So, <clears throat> you know. When it comes to this movie, though, like, you know, so you're saying it's either entry level or expertise level. Where does it come? Where does it sit in, like, the terms of special effects? Like, when it when you compare it to some of the other uh, legendary uh, directors out there. <laughs> it's basically unsimulated. So, I mean, it's okay. kind of more like if basically if you filmed all the natives hunting and just had extended footage of that in Apocalypse Now and then added all the other just kind of uh, gore-themed uh, Italian knockoff movies. <laughs> just, it's a right. of that. Right. No, I agree with you on the, especially the Italian, uh, you know, uh, I wouldn't even say exploitative, and you know I, I was going to bring that up here. And you know this film had a lot of controversy when it first came out. You know, it's banned in over like 40 different countries. And, and you know, that is actually kind of a, it plays into itself because the only reason it's banned is unfortunately for animal cruelty. It has nothing to do with the depictions of people dying. It's actually because they were cruel to animals. So that's that's actually one of the one of the, the accolades to it. That's one of the things that kind of has that mythos about it. People are like, oh my god, this movie's banned in like 40 countries? <laughs> it must be insane. It's like, it is crazy, but it's it's because it hides behind that repertoire of, you know, oh, it's for animal cruelty. Like, once you look it up. It is many- funny. It, yeah, it makes that argument what's worse, seeing people being torn apart versus seeing people being raped by uh, a gang of natives versus being people animals being killed and not even eaten you know right uh rodrigo uh, duato he kind of did the same thing as warner uh, herzog well is known kind of like the same thing um mm-hmm. for putting his actors through real things like basically pushing them really hard ever all the special effects in this movie like you see all the animal stuff that's real like when it's actually on the girl and she's screaming she's like ah that's all, all really happening what do you think of those kind of directors that push the actors to the uh, to the brink? I should say, you know, they they really push them really hard. Do you I think it, nec- it brings uh, more out of the film? I don't necessarily approve of it, but I understand where they're coming from. And at the same time, I mean, uh, I don't know how much of it is they want to test themselves as a person, or if they had gone kind of berserk mad i mean there's a limit to all of it i i'm fine with method acting if people want to stay in character the whole shoot at the same time you know just don't be a dick in this case i feel like a lot of people just weren't didn't brief each other enough it sounds like you know it's a lot of he said she said uh uh i'll get into some of the other crazy stuff but yeah i understand your, your point he's kind of trying to do what Klaus Kinski and Werner Herzog were doing on Fitzcarraldo and Aguirre, where mm. they're actually having a bunch of natives, you know, 
in a historical period piece, you know, pull a boat overhead and actually building the actual set. It just almost makes you wonder, had they just used stock footage after the <laughs> fact and then just had a good makeup crew, it would have gone totally differently. Like they wouldn't have known there was all this shocking stuff until, uh, you know, the movie came out. It's funny how Carl Gabriel York is kind of the only actor who actually went on to be, do bigger things like Idle Hands right. and Apollo 13. <laughs> and he was in an affair with uh, Francesca Ciardi and... <laughs> Uh, he was like, no, they didn't, we didn't do it. And she said, oh, we totally did it for real. <laughs> and Dato, he kind of, he didn't like fade away. He he went back to doing films, but he did a lot of like other different things too. Yeah. And, he got on trial for this movie. Right. Because people thought it was murder and he had to bring the actors off their contract, which said they would go into seclusion for five years. So they couldn't do any other movies. So people really thought they were dead. Jeez. <laughs> So uh, what, what do you think about that exploited, exploitative nature? I know I've grilled you about this before, but I want to know because we're on this special here. What do you think about that? That is one of the key things about uh, Cannibal Holocaust. Because let me let me tell you a story real quick. Because like when I first heard about this film, it was a long time ago from a friend. And she was all like, oh, yeah, you know, I've seen this film where they depict uh, these cannibals eating people. And I said, that's, that's bullshit. I said, that's a lie. And she was like, why do you say that? And I said, because you can't depict murder on film. I said, that's, that's illegal. And she was like, no, it's a real film. It's called Cannibal Holocaust. I was like, well, then that's a snuff film. And then I actually ended up finding it and watching it. And I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. And even, you know, a lot of people, including the director from Hostel, once said, like, it's a movie where the effects are so bad they're good. And it, it really does look, it is, it is quite a, you know, the beginning is a reenactment of this guy finding the, the film. And then the rest of it is the, you know, I guess you can argue it's one of the first found footage films ever in the history of film. And it, it actually kind of gets, that's one of the best things about Cannibal Holocaust is it really brought that aspect to it of found footage. But then because of all the uh, PR, all the, you know, the, how much it got banned, it really left yeah. the door open for like Blair Witch to be claimed to be the, the first ever found footage film. But what do you think about the exploitative nature of the film though? Like that's, that's how it grew is because it was considered a snuff film. Yeah. I mean, with, with all the, with the back and forth showing like the actual like classical music uh, transitions and montages where they show these people who discover this tape, you could kind of argue it's a movie within a movie kind of, you know, because mm -hmm. they're actually, you know, witnessing all this footage after the fact and discussing it. Right. But so maybe an animal snuff film, but not a legit like people actually dying on film, but it is one of those, it's kind of more of a just, I don't know if I want to even just say found footage, but it's kind of more of a uh, just like unexplained until the last, you know, 10 minutes, how, you know, a bunch of reporters and film crew got killed by this, you know. But uh, they deserved it. They yeah. deserve it in the film, but that gets lost in this movie because of all the crazy PR. I mean, no one ever talks about that in the film is how this group of people really were horrible to the natives. They came in there, they were raping natives, they were killing their food. And yeah. at the end of the day, you were like, these people deserve it. But everyone's like, oh my God, can you believe this has real people being eaten by cannibals in it? No, that's a good point. I, I think uh, it's kind of one of those, it had good intentions. The message kind of gets lost halfway through because the audience is either reacting to the shocking material, but then it's just so funny when it starts, you know, you're just like, it's not too bad so far. <laughs> it's not. But even how it starts, it says, this is an actual film and we are showing it to you in its entirely entirety. I mean, they really tried to push this as a, you're practically watching some like real shit. <laughs> That's true. I mean, I'm not necessarily a fan of torture born, but this is a whole different animal. No pun intended where this is a movie where, yes. It's trying to actually, like you say, uh, make you believe that it looks real. Some of it's real. You know, obviously the actual murders of the character, human characters isn't. But it, it's just kind of one of those, yeah, it's just, it's kind of like any kind of office politics. When you open the door, all these other doors open, and we're, we're kind of like any kind of political discussion. No one really wants to have a mature 
chat about this movie. It's kind of just, uh, it it kind of went bigger than even the director Rugaro Diodato could have even imagined. Where right. you know, he's like, he didn't expect this big a reaction. He just thought, you know, he was kind of making a straightforward, you know, video nasty, a shocking movie for the drive-in crowd, and it's just uh, as if the X rating wasn't enough. It's just mm. I. I how do you think this got out to this many people? But uh, underground, the underground tape trade. The underground. That's, wow. that's really how it came to be. You know, this is. Uh, I would say this is an example of the first ever kind of video store clerks, kind of you know having power back in the day, passing yeah. tapes back and forth, telling people like, "Hey, you want to know a real knowledge. scary film? Yeah, there's a film called Cannibal Holocaust." Um, and you know, my question to you is: Is do you think Cannibal Holocaust blurs that line? Between, you know, the wanting to see a snuff film and then wanting to see a really gory flick. Do you think it's one of those films that really kind of blur that line to make you believe that this is a real thing? It's a good question. I mean, I think, I, I, to your point, I think this was before really even the snuff awareness. I think he just wanted to show kind of a, not a mockumentary necessarily, but kind of just a... He stumbled into it. Right. It's just kind of a... <laughs> a yeah, I stumbled onto just a found movie that explores a team and he's just trying too hard to make it. You actually believe they died on film and it worked. People actually bought it for a second. And and then we're getting into the controversial argument on whether it's a good movie or not. It's it's kind of just a matter of I think he was experimenting and somehow, you know, regardless of what you want to say, went too far or it got too real or it's kind of was one of those someone was going to do it one way or the other and he was the first to basically do it <laughs> right you know that, that's another good question See, that's why i love having cam on this uh, on this show <laughs> ladies and gentlemen is not is it a good point. film <laughs> is it a good film that is a really good question Ooh, and you know i've seen this question. film i'm gonna i can count how many times i've seen this film on one hand at least five times I've seen this film for for <laughs> different reasons, either watching it with friends a couple times, doing it for research purposes. I've seen the film at least five times. Oh, wow. So, you know, when it comes to this film, I have to say, do I think it's good? You know, for the time in which it came out, and this is what me and Cam always tell our audience to do, is, you know, you got to put yourself there at the time and place. This is before the Internet. This is before mm-hmm. word of mouth. This is during tape trading. This is, you know, during a lot of that kind of stuff. <laughs> so you have to give credit where credit's due. Totally. This film really did capture, you know, that essence through it through on its own. It was organic. It really was. It's basically an organic it. piece. Yeah. I like that. It's um, basically kind of a it's a good shocking movie, basically. That's what it is. Yeah. So you don't have to say it's piece. a good movie objectively in terms of, you know, any other war or slaughter movie or straightforward slasher. It's kind of more just again, you know, some of the plot. Push. A simple plot that anybody can do, anyone can think of, you know, basically people going in there, do they deserve it? Yes, they do, because they're doing everything to piss off the natives. Simple plot, simple, simple, simple. And, you know, it, it, but it doesn't come through because of the goriness, you know, cutting up the turtle and everything like that and eat it, which is pretty gnarly, you know, all the other special effects. <laughs> but, you know, I felt bad for the spider too. That was a big spider they killed with that machete. Oh, uh, well. Poor yeah. spider. <laughs> it's funny how I'm late on that. It's like turtle. I don't think it needed to get slaughtered. Spider. I mean, do spiders have rights? <laughs> <laughs> Turtles do, but spiders don't. Okay, that is the next debate here on this show. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, though. But no, I, 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 overall, I think the film, uh, I think it's a good film. I think overall it's a decent film. Do I think it's great? I would put Cannibal Holocaust probably where it's at on most uh, critic ratings, which is a five, five point five. That's actually where I would put the film because it's not a film you need to see, but it's definitely one of those films if you want to push the boundaries of your uh, imagination when it comes to the gore factor. Some, some yeah, Cam, Cam's not in here in agreement here. This is a film you want to see. <laughs> this is a film that's definitely going to push that envelope, make you go, "Holy <laughs> shit!" People think of this kind of stuff. Yes, they do. <laughs> And, you know, one more thing, too, I want to say, and, you know, I, I didn't really kind of, this didn't really, um, you know, I wasn't really 
aware of this until I heard it from uh, Ma- Malcolm McDowell the other day on a uh, on a reading about uh, Clockwork Orange. Uh, you know, he was talking about, and I actually it didn't occur to me until then is how there's a certain level of artistic freedom from old movies like nudism and gore and a yeah. lot of things that you just don't see nowadays. And that's why Once this movie the repercussions. Right. And, you know, I guess you could say I would put this movie overall as a 5.5. But in hindsight, I would actually put this movie farther up the totem pole as in probably an eight when it came to all the movies it inspired. And I I just mean that in terms of, you know, where would you put this movie in influence? Hell, directors talk about this movie all the time. All the great (laughs) horror directors say Cannibal Holocaust was a movie that made me go, how the hell did they do that? Oh, totally. It's. It's going to come up regardless of what anyone wants to or not, uh, which separates it probably from a social commentary and say maybe a Romero movie or even a typical Giallo kind of film. Is it again, it's kind of just it's a six out of ten for me because it's just like it's just a morbid curiosity and you might even have to watch it in segments if you if it becomes too much for you. But it's still it's I get hungry when I watch these kind of films. Do you really? <laughs> no. no, but I get hungry when I watch zombie films. <laughs> zombie films make me hungry i'll be sitting there with people and i'd be like god i am hungry and they're like what the mushy. hell is wrong with you <laughs> <laughs> uh, especially around anything, narrow films i mean it, it's gonna depend i mean well, watch this with a bunch of hardcore horror fans and that might actually be a better setting for you because then you'll be with other pals who you know aren't psychos and you're just gonna be right. like Hey, okay, it's okay to laugh at the absurdity or just the stupidity, and yeah, (laughs) if we need therapy afterwards, we'll go. We'll all go together. (laughs) That's a great point, Cam, and you know that that's a great uh, word of caution to the audience. And I I would actually point that out as well. No, no, because one of the times I watched (laughs) this films was with a couple buddies, and I remember one of my buddies going, "Oh, this is bullshit," and I was like, "Why do you say that?" He was like, "Because why they put that stupid core that." Stupid, like classic music on top of the rape scene and stuff. It's like if you really wanted me to believe it was real. You know, you just put it with the silence and the stark and the whole. <laughs> what do you think of Robert Kerman's acting <laughs> per se? You know, um, like the again, as we were saying, I don't think they knew what they had. I don't <laughs> think they knew what they had. So the overacting is very for the time, very very. Yeah, it's good for the time. I would get say, you know, maybe maybe a little overdone, <laughs> but for the most part, I would say like it was mediocre. But if it was, you know, I would say for the better. And but that's that's also the whole thing. Cam is like that's what also <laughs> makes it like, is this real or not? Because I can't tell if this guy's being serious or being like, you know, <laughs> is he really going? Oh my god, when he's there eating his buddy up. I mean, <laughs> what's going on here? You know, but, um... I mean, and he really does kind of over in the film come off as a fucking psychopath especially when they start like raping the natives and killing the little piglet and stuff i mean and light and then one of the most iconic scene when they light the hut on fire that actual scene too some of the natives actually got burned in that scene i bet i really bet <laughs> yeah there was a lot of exploitative things done in this film we're not gonna i'm not gonna lie to you my audience and you know i'm not trying to say like you know I'm surprised they did more stuff with him. I'm surprised they didn't just eat his ass because <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I'm surprised they did. I'm just saying uh, because he was, you know, he did some fucked up shit. Not to mention making these actors, you know, take a uh, a, a brief leave to where they, you know, didn't they couldn't do anything for a while, which I thought was interesting. They could have worked under a different name, especially. They since could have, but that also shows you that he was playing into this whole, you know, this is real. This is practically a goddamn documentary. <laughs> <laughs> and see, this uh... is why. I think Cannibal Holocaust, in my way, has a, has my love, but then again, it has my hate too. At the same time, Cam, because too far. <laughs> you know this. You know this is like yeah. this is one of the things that brought us together on pod, pod, uh, talking and podcasting together is because you know I think when it comes to those kind of horror films that you know, especially like you know, Zombie, uh, Flower of Blood and Bone, and even that one, I can make the argument. I like them, but to the extent of. You know what you're trying to do. You're trying to blur that line as close mm-hmm. as possible. As close <laughs> as possible. So, you know, but you can still pull back and say, well, this is just a work of art and film. It's like. <laughs> you can just be sarcastic about it. Yeah. 
masterpiece. It's, it's a masterpiece. Whatever. And it is. It is. It is, Cam. This is one of those films I you a can horror argue masterpiece. Yeah. is a horror masterpiece. Whenever we talk about this film, will be talked about when we're long dead and people are eating our bodies, cannibals, whatever you want to say, you know. You know, don't start, you know, eat the rest of us. Don't start with our faces because that would just be a tragedy. Cam <laughs> yeah, talking about. Uh, that, that's that's, some that's dessert. Eat our face that dessert. <laughs> But, you know, I, I do, I love, it's a love-hate relationship with me. So, Oprah, <laughs> how do you feel about the film? Let's do a double feature of it with The Room. <laughs> uh, the Room, you're going to be arguing whether it's a good movie that's poorly made or whether it's just a vanity piece that no one will fess up on. And it's like, and then you can stay for after the fact, and it's like, that'll be <laughs> the second movie that gets played, and it's kind of, uh, half the people will leave, and the other half will stay saying, oh my god, is this for real? <laughs> and we can do a and a with fans and experts on it, that'll be fun. That'd be fun. But uh, I've seen, you know, and it, this is, you know, from the 60s and 70s, uh, that era when it comes to these horror films, I think, and I've told you, have a certain level of charm that we just don't see. And uh, and I've shock. seen some crazy, crazy shock, shock plotation kind of films, you know, where mm-hmm. the guys are drilling holes and girls' brains and slurping it out and girls are just running around butt naked in the whole film. I mean, I've seen some crazy, crazy <laughs> films like that. And, you know, these are... These are the drive-in classics, man. These are what's considered the drive-in <laughs> horror classics. And, you know, um, I love it because, you know, it's part of films, and I think they have their place. But for me, it's just like, you know, I don't know if I would say it's my cup of tea, Cam. I guess you could say I could uh, I put my feet in every once in a while, you know. 